Hi guys, welcome back to Man Cave Munchies. Today I'm going to show you a favorite from the Big Easy called beignets, which is kind of like French donuts. What's even better is I'm going to show you how to make it the easy way, because instead of getting your hands all messy, I'm going to show you how to do the whole process in a food processor. Okay, and here's what you're going to need to do everything. You're going to need three cups of flour. You're going to need a quarter cup of evaporated milk. You're going to need a third of a cup of sugar. You're going to need a couple of tablespoons of butter. You're going to need one egg. You're going to need a tablespoon of yeast. You're going to need a dash of both salt and a dash of vanilla. And last but not least, you're going to need a cup of hot water. By hot, I mean about 110 degrees, which is usually about how hot it comes out of your tap. Don't make it too hot or you'll kill the yeast. So what we're going to do to get started is we're going to take the yeast and we're going to put it into the water like so. And the reason I start like this is you want to let your yeast start to come to life while at the same time you don't want to scramble this here, right? Because if you put this into hot water you're going to scramble it. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off with the other ingredients right in here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in my evaporated milk. I'm going to take this off of here to start off with. I'm going to put my sugar in here. I'm going to put my egg. And I'm going to put my two tablespoons of butter into the mix. And I'm just going to pulse a little bit to break it up. Next, I'm going to add one cup of the flour, like so, and then again, just pulse it a bit. I'm going to add another cup. It's better to do this in stages, so this way it doesn't become a total disaster area. Probably see it rolling around in there. Gonna add the last cup of flour. Try to hit the mark, not the man. There you go. And I'm gonna add about half of my yeast water here. And pulse it some more. And then I'm going to add the rest of my water. I'm going to add a little shot of salt. I'd say about a half a teaspoon should do. We don't want to make it too salty. And I'm going to hit up just a little bit, a little splash of vanilla. And I'm going to let it whirl around some more. Alright, let's see what we've got. As you can see, we've kind of formed a dough in here. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the dough out and I'm going to put it in the big bowl. And then we'll continue to work on it from there. Because again, dough is a kind of a tactile thing. Sometimes it's too loose, sometimes it's too wet. And what you want to do is you want to work this around until it turns into a dough. Now right now it actually might be a little bit too wet, so what we can do if it is, is we can add more flour. But before I do that, I want to get what's in the container out and continue to mix it a bit. Because even though I said you wouldn't have to become a big mess, well, sooner or later you got to work the dough, right? But at least you got the worst part of it out of the way. Because the other way to do it is to mix it in a bowl from the get-go. This thing looks like it needs probably about hmm, another half a cup or so. Okay. Yeah, let's add about a half a cup to that. And we'll see what we got. It's kind of wet. And the reason I do it like this, I'd rather have too little than too much flour. Because, you know, you can always add flour. It's kind of hard to take it away and you don't want to make it too stiff. 
But see, now we're starting to actually get like a bread kind of consistency, and that's the way this thing is. It's a donut, which is basically just sweet bread. Keep mixing that. Now, the beauty of this is once you get the dough actually finished, which we're almost there now, all you have to do, well, there's three things you have to do, actually. Number one, you got to let it proof for about an hour, which means just let it sit there and rise. Usually I just cover it up with a towel. The other thing is if you don't want to make it right away, let's say you want to make the beignets tomorrow, you can put, cover this bowl up, you can put it in the fridge, and you can actually let it sit overnight for up to 24 hours in a cold refrigerator before you actually take it out and work with it. There we go. Then, of course, the third thing you got to do is you got to clean the Frankenfingers, guys. But at least I only have one hand that's a total wreck. If I had mixed this thing by hand from the get go, there you go, a beignet ball. I'm going to put that into my bowl. And if my assistant will be so kind as to hand me a towel, I'm just going to cover it up and let it sit here for one hour. And then we'll be back and I'll show you what's next. All right, our bowl of beignets has been sitting here for an hour. And as you can see, it growed some. We're going to take this out of here and we're going to put it over on the cutting board over here in a second. But before we do that, remember the vegetable oil? What you want to do is you want to pour it into a pot because we're going to heat this up to about 300 degrees and then we're going to actually boil our beignets. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take about half of this, I'm going to use a knife, I'm just going to cut this thing right down the middle. I'm going to do this in two flights. And then I'm going to take half of it out and I'll put it on a lightly floured board. We're also going to need one of these to you know, work with the beignets once we put them back in the pot. A little bit of that leftover flour, good use for it. All right, so let's take out half of it. I'm going to put it on the board. And you know, you want to get, you don't want to put tons of flour on it, but you just want to get it so enough so it doesn't stick. Okay, like so. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take your board, or you're going to take your rolling pin, and you want to roll this thing out into about an eighth of an inch thick, and then we're going to cut it into little squares. There we go. And we just take this, you want to go about three inches a square. So from this particular angle, you're going to get, I can say about three squares out of it. All right, and then we're going to start cutting them this way. And if you don't get an exact square, don't worry about it, we can reuse them later. What we're trying to do right now is get these things ready to go into the hot oil. Then what you're going to do is you're just going to start putting them into the hot oil. And what they'll do is they'll cook and they will float to the surface. And then we'll flip them over once they brown on one side. It usually takes uh, two, three minutes for each one. You might need to do it in a couple of flights depending on how big your you know, oil bath is. And they don't have to be perfectly square. There you go. Just don't want to put so many in there that they start sticking into each other. I'm going to have to put one more in there. So we're going to do this in about two flights, which means we'll get up probably a little more than a dozen beignets. And what will happen is they'll also start to puff up as they cook in the oil bath. And they're floating to the surface already. And you're going to leave, leave them, I'd say, for about two or three minutes. I'll be right back. All right. If you have a 300 degree oil bath in three minutes, you should get something that looks like this. Just roll them over. Do the other side for another three. And then I'll show you what to do next. Stay tuned. All right, let's see if we're done. Oh yeah, absolutely perfect. Let's just put these on paper towels to degrease and believe it or not I mean I know these things look like they're soaking up all that oil but they're not they're almost impervious to it so they're nice and fluffy on the inside you'll see and then what you want to do is you want to continue with the rest of your of your beignets until they're all done and then you can come back and I'll show you what to do with your finished products stand by for more man cave munchies the finished product you can make them small you can make them big you can serve them traditionally with powdered sugar you can do what my producer does which is put a little jam on them 
because when it comes to having a party, as the French say in the quarter, Les élèves bon temps brûlés. Let the good times roll at Man Cave Munchies. See you next week, gang.